thanks for watching and today I will present a beautiful and artistic problem that will um, combine origami sort of and uh, geometry and calculus. So consider the following beautiful picture. So here's where the origami part comes in. You start with a triangle, right triangle whose you know, adjacent and opposite sides are one and you get some angle theta one and then the next triangle is constructed as follows it's a right triangle whose uh, side new side is the hypotenuse of the original triangle and the other side is one and then you repeat sorry this is angle theta two and then you construct a new right triangle whose side is the old hypotenuse and the new side is one and you get an angle theta three, et cetera, et cetera. Theta four. And the point is you get the following new pretty picture. It's like a snail-like thing. I think it was this Pokemon or something. It looks like this. And what I'm gonna show is that in fact, if you continue this picture indefinitely, this the snail or something will wind up indefinitely and I'll, I'm actually claiming that if you take the sum of those angles, the sum is infinity. So the sum from n from 1 to infinity of theta n equals to infinity. And so in other words, if the sum of the angles is, is infinity, intuitively it means that the picture is winding down infinitely many times. And so how do you do that? Well, first of all, let's consider the hypotenuses, or hypotheni, I guess, <laughs> of the triangles. Because look, the first triangle Theta 1, well, it has hypotenuse square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is square root of 2. And therefore, for example, the tangent of theta 1, actually, we will need the hypotenuse in a second, but tangent of theta 1 becomes 1 over 1, which is 1, which tells you that theta 1 is arctangent of 1. Yeah, it's pi over 4, but we won't worry about this now. And now let's consider the second triangle. So, we know that one of the sides of the second triangle is square root of 1, square root of 2. And the other side is 1. First of all, it tells us that tangent of theta 2 is again opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over square root of 2, which tells us that theta 2 is the arctangent of 1 over square root of 2. Yeah. Let's continue. So, moreover, the hypotenuse of this triangle becomes square root of 1 squared plus square root of 2 squared which is one square root of one plus two, which is square root of three. And now let's continue until you see the pattern. So maybe step three. We have again our triangle here. Now with sides square root of three, so this triangle here, square root of three and one, and that's theta 3. The more triangles I draw, the more surrealistic the picture looks. So this time, tangent of theta 3 is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over square root of 3. So theta 3 is arctangent of 1 over square root of 3. And similarly, the hypotenuse here becomes square root of 1 squared plus this squared, which is 3, and it's square root of 4. And now hopefully you notice a pattern. 
because theta 1 is tan arctangent of 1 over square root of 1, theta 2 is arctangent of 1 over square root of 2, theta 3 is arctangent of 1 over square root of 3, and if you continue, you get that theta n is arctangent of 1 over square root of n. And if you like, you just do that using induction if you want, you know, or uh, just with the pattern, you know, that also works. Okay, very good. So we found that theta n is arctangent of 1 over square root of n. And now all that we need to consider is just the sum of the theta n's. So maybe that's step four. The sum of the theta n's equals to the sum, again, from 1 to infinity, sum for 1 to infinity of arctangent of 1 over square root of n. And well, now we basically what we need to show is that this series in fact diverges. And let's think about a couple of our series techniques. Well, the divergence test doesn't work because this goes, as n goes to infinity, this term goes to arctangent of 0, which is 0. That doesn't work. The integral test, you could try it out. And in fact, I did a video of the integral arctangent of square root of x or something, I believe you can, that might work. But I think the easiest thing to do is really to compare this with the term 1 over square root of n. So let's use what's called the limit comparison test. So again, let a n be our thing. So arctangent of 1 over square root of n, and let dn, let's just compare it with 1 over square root of n, and see what happens. Okay. Both are positive terms, so no need to consider the absolute values. And now, let's consider the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n. That's the limit as n goes to infinity of arctangent of 1 over square root of n over 1 over square root of n. And the nice thing is, this is of the form 0 over 0, which means we need to call the do 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 the loppy tau. So let's do limit x goes to infinity of arctangent of 1 over square root of x over 1 over square root of x. Well, by L'Hopital, the derivative, by L'Hopital and the Chen Lu, the derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus whatever this is squared, so 1 over x squared, and we need to differentiate 1 over square root of x, but 1 over square root of x is x to the minus 1 half, so this becomes minus 1 half, x to the minus 3 halves, and then the bottom is the same thing, minus 1 half, x to the minus 3 halves. And nicely, again, the nicest part of today's talk, of today's video, those things cancel out, and if you let x goes to infinity, this limit becomes 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1. So, in particular, because this holds for x, for continuous functions, this also holds for the discrete version, sequences. So, in the limit, a n over b n go to 1, which means, roughly speaking, in the limit, a n is sort of the same as b n. In particular, by the limit comparison test, we know that the first series converges if and only if the second series converges. So by the limit comparison test, test the sum from n 
equals to 1 to infinity of a n converges if and only if the sum from 1 to infinity of d n converges and same with diverges but let's see what happens to the sum of d n sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over square root of n that of course of d n that's the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over square root of n, which is the same as the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p. However, there is this nice thing called the p-test, or I like to call it the pi -M test, namely, the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p converges if and only if p is strictly greater than 1. Think of 1 over n squared. So, because here, sorry, I forgot to say that's n to the 1 half, because here p is 1 half, which is less than 1, this series actually diverges. And therefore, because the series of dn diverges, the original series diverges as well. So because the sum of dn diverges, the sum of an, n from 1 to infinity, which is the sum from n from 1 to arctangent of 1 over square root of n, which is the sum from 1 to infinity of theta n diverges. In other words, just like we wanted to show, the sum of the angles equals to infinity. Which usually it's a bad thing, but here's exactly what we wanted to show. So this pi m origami actually winds up infinitely many times. Which is a neat fact. All right, and if you seriously had lots of fun here and want to see more math videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.